a shadow that was thought to be a sword, and someone was struggling to pull it out. But it turned out to be just a radish, that Tuka, a protagonist in this story, managed to pull out. A large radish, which in his eyes had a perfect shape. He named it Catherine. With enthusiasm, he dressed it in black stockings. Yuna came and caught him doing it. Tuka was shocked and embarrassed. He claimed that he was just harvesting the radish. Yuna asked why he put stockings on the radish, and Tuka replied that anyone would do it if they found a radish with a perfect thigh shape like that. Only a pervert would do that, Yuna said. Two men who happened to pass by, also did the same thing. They were surprised and tried to hide the radish that had been dressed in stockings in between their clothes. Yuna compared Tuka to a hero who was the same age as him and had already saved the world, unlike Tuka who only did weird things and was lazy. Tuka complained again. Everyone talked about this legendary hero and that, he also complained about the seal of the legendary hero that did not last long so there were many devils wandering around. What he cared about now was only his house and his farmland. And also Yuna. Tuka secretly was interested in Yuna's body, which he considered proportional, especially her thighs. Unconsciously, Tuka pulled Yuna's knee socks while she was sitting, and Yuna immediately kicked him. Yuna complained about Tuka not thinking about their safety, even though devils could attack them at any time. But it turned out that he had prepared a trap in case there were devils suddenly attacking his house and farmland. Suddenly, a devil attacked the village. People were running in panic, but Yuna tripped and fell. The devil was already behind her. Tuka saw from a distance behind a tree and felt he had to save Yuna because he needed her for his future plans. He came up with a plan to lure the devil into his trap by preparing a roast pork that would attract it. The aroma of the roast pork reached the devil's nose, but it turned out that the devil was disgusted and did not like pork. Tuka's plan failed, so he tried to attack the devil with his hoe. However, at that moment, Cyan Brayden, the legendary hero, arrived and killed the devil. Yuna and the villagers were grateful to Cyan. The legendary hero had also saved Yuna three years ago and remembered her smile. Yuna felt embarrassed and happy to hear this. Tuka was jealous and tried to tell Yuna that she also tried to save her, but Yuna turned her face away, thinking that Tuka was probably cooking barbecue while she was in danger. Suddenly, a terrifying monster-like sound was heard, and all the villagers panicked. But it turned out that it was only Cyan's hungry stomach. Yuna offered Cyan to come to her house and have lunch. Tuka became even more jealous. As Cyan approached, he smelled the delicious barbecue and walked towards it. Unexpectedly, Cyan fell into Tuka's trap and died in it. The villagers blamed Tuka for the trap, and without the hero, the world would be in chaos. Tuka claimed that it was just an accident. When the villagers threatened to report her to the king, Tuka said that no one would believe that the legendary hero died because he fell into a trap. It was possible that all the villagers were considered guilty of killing him together. Finally, to protect the village, they decided to bury Cyan's body and erase all traces of it. There was one person hiding behind the tree who saw what they did. The next morning, Tuka woke up feeling very refreshed and different from usual. When he looked in the mirror, he was surprised to see that she now had the same physique as the legendary hero he'd buried last night. He still thought it was just a dream. To prove it, he went straight to Yuna's house, and Yuna also saw him as Cyan. Yuna's gaze was amazed when she saw him. Tuka immediately thought of something lewd, and told Yuna that she had a request for her to dress as he wished. Yuna was suspicious of him and sensed that something was wrong with him. She immediately hit Tuka, causing him to lose his sight. When Yuna was about to hit her again, Tuka finally admitted that it was him. He also didn't know why he woke up in that body. Yuna asked for proof that he was really Tuka. Tuka immediately said magical girl magical Yunarin. Those were the words that Yuna often said when she was 12 years old. Only Tuka knew about it, no one else in the village knew about it. To cover up her embarrassment, Yuna hit Tuka once more before admitting that she already believed that the person in front of her was really Tuka. When speculating that what happened to him was due to magic, causing him and the hero's body to switch places, a woman's laughter was heard. Upon investigation, the source of the voice came from his land, where someone was trying not to fall into her trap. She claimed to be Henry Haysworth the necromancer. She was the one who swapped Tuka's body with the hero's. After rescuing the little woman from the hole, 
Tuca asked her to return his body to its original state, but she refused and instead appointed him to save the world. In a flashback, it turned out that Henri had promised Cyan that if he died, Henri would transfer the hero's power to someone who was believed to be able to save the world. When Yuna was ready to go on an adventure to save the world, Tuca still refused the invitation because he thought it would be troublesome. Henri then threatened to kill him if she refused because she had placed Tuca's original body seal in a small coffin she carried. He could kill him any time by destroying the coffin. Tuca could not refuse at all, and he agreed to save the world. Finally, the three of them went on an adventure together. Tuca assumed that Henri had a lot of money for their trip, but it turned out that they only had very little money, even just enough for one night's stay. Nonetheless, Tuca, with his heroic demeanor, felt very confident and somehow managed to buy Yuna a very expensive magic wand and pay for their lunch. After they found out, it turned out that Tuca was only using people's kindness for his own pleasure. When Yuna and Henri went to the guild to find work, Tuca stayed behind because he thought it would be very inconvenient. Suddenly, two girls approached him and invited Tuca. However, one of them was suspicious because there were many imposters trying to pretend to be heroes. So, to test her, she called her bodyguard to fight Tuca. Initially, Tuca was afraid to face him, but he immediately remembered the sacred sword that the hero had. With his confidence, he was ready to face the bodyguard with his sacred sword. They attacked each other, and when Tuca successfully avoided the attack and was in the blind spot behind the bodyguard, he confidently tried to stab him with her sword, but the sword immediately curved when it hit his body. He just realized that the sword was just a replica. The person then attacked her back and realized that he was a fake hero. At the guild, Henri and Yuna meet Kyle, the right-hand man of the legendary hero. When Kyle asks about the whereabouts of the legendary hero, Henri tells Kyle that the hero has died. The scene then cuts to Tuka who is already tied to the execution pole in front of many people. At that moment, Kyle comes with Yuna and Henri to free him. Kyle brings a real sacred sword, gives it to Tuka, and tells her to imagine a big sword. The sword then transforms into a huge sword. When everyone believes it, the big sword also bends. The people there become doubtful again. At that moment, Yuna comes and brings a quest to kill a devil, and if Tuka can kill more devils than anyone else, it will prove that he is the real hero. At the inn, Tuka wonders why her zombie body is getting more and more decayed and why her sacred sword is always bending. Henri predicts that it is because Tuka's mana is very low, unlike the real legendary hero. Finally, Henri gives Tuka a magic crystal to measure her mana. It turns out that Tuka's mana is only at level 1, which is equivalent to that of a baby. With that condition, Kyle offers himself to be the hero. Everyone agrees, except for Henri, who says that the successor of the legendary hero should be him, the one who can save the world, kill the legendary hero, and no one else can surpass him. At that moment, Kyle raises his sword to Tuka and asks if Henri will agree to let him become the legendary hero if he can kill him, 